With over 40 outfits and more than 50 types of weaves in Forbidden West, choosing the best combinations can get a bit overwhelming. So today, we're going to cover how to choose the best outfit and weave combo for your playstyle, the best endgame outfit builds, which outfits you should pick up just to grab their unique weaves, and my updated outfit recommendations for each stage of the game. First, let's break down what you're seeing when looking at an outfit's stats in your inventory. In the left column, we have a set of damage resistance stats. Every outfit has resistance to melee and range damage, plus some combination of elemental resistances. Melee resistance simply reduces the damage Aloy takes when enemies attack directly, either a machine with their body or a human enemy with a melee weapon. Pretty much all enemies have at least a few melee attacks they use regularly, so having high melee resistance is important. Some melee attacks are enhanced with elemental damage as well, like the Fire Claw's Flaming Claw Swipes. Ranged resistance reduces damage taken by projectiles. Ranged attacks can also be enhanced with elemental damage, like the Fire Claw's Flaming Boulders and the Claw Strider's Tail Projectiles, or not enhanced, like the Rock's Burrowers Chuck at you and the Arrows from Human Enemies. Upgrading an outfit at the workbench will increase all of its resistance stats, and generally, within a rarity class of the same color, outfits have similar maximums for melee and ranged resistance. Jumping up to the next rarity level will offer the greatest increase in these stats. This is true for elemental resistances as well, but these vary much more between outfits of the same rarity class. Plus, most outfits also have elemental weaknesses. An elemental weakness, indicated by a negative number, will actually cause you to take slightly more damage from an element. Green outfits don't have any elemental weaknesses, and have just one or two elemental strengths. Blue rarity outfits also have one or two strengths, but they also have one weakness. At the purple rarity, outfits have two, three, or four strengths, and two weaknesses. And finally, all six of the gold legendary outfits have four elemental strengths and two weaknesses. Just like machines having strengths and weaknesses to different elements, outfits having both is intended to be a balancing mechanism that forces you to choose between the outfit's damage resistance stats and its other major category of benefits, skill boosts. Skill boosts, shown in the right column of an outfit's stats table, are the most important factors to consider when choosing your outfit. The damage resistance stats are important, but skill boosts are what really differentiate outfits and enhance your playstyle. With the exception of a few, these skill boosts correspond to skills found in the skill tree. The plus one or plus two next to each indicates how many points it will add to the overall level of the skill. These points are added on top of the points that come from unlocking the skill in the skill tree. It's important to note that all skills associated with outfits have a maximum level. In most cases, this maximum is 4, but some skills max out at level 2. Let's take Concentration Regen for example. We can see here that I have two levels, represented by these white bars, which come from having the two Concentration Regen passive skills unlocked in the skill tree. Because I'm currently wearing an outfit with a plus two Concentration Regen boost, I get an additional two blue chevrons added on top of that, bringing this skill to its max level. These two points could also come from an outfit weave, in which case they would be orange. Generally, it's a good idea to select outfits that will boost skills you use often, with the goal being to max them out. Keep in mind, outfits will have skill boosts that start grayed out, which indicates they're locked and inactive. Upgrading an outfit will both unlock these boosts and increase the level of existing boosts from plus one to plus two. Green outfits have a maximum of two or three skill boosts when fully upgraded. Blue have three or four boosts, purple have four or five, and all gold legendary outfits have six. Outfits are loosely categorized by the skill boosts they offer. For example, a hunter-focused outfit like the Nora Sentinel boosts skills from the hunter branch of the skill tree, like Concentration Plus and Stamina Regen, while a stealth-focused outfit like the Utaru Gravesinger boosts skills from the Infiltrator branch, like Low Profile and Stealth Range Plus. However, there are outfits that pull from multiple branches, like the Tanakh Vindicator that boosts skills in the Warrior, Trapper, and Hunter branches. Skills can also be boosted by unique weaves. All green outfits come with a single plus one skill boost weave. Blue and purple rarity outfits come with a single plus two weave. The gold legendary outfits each come with two plus two weaves. These weaves come locked in outfit slots and only become active once you unlock the slot by upgrading the outfit to level three. At this point, you can also remove them to use on other outfits. You can also find some additional plus one skill boosting weaves for sale at merchants in Baron Light, Plainsong, and Scalding Spear. Now, unless you use the inventory duplication exploit on patch 1.18, you can only get one copy of every unique weave in the game. My video on the duplication exploit is linked below if you're interested. Even more importantly, be aware that between these unique weaves, the built-in skill boosts on an outfit, and the skills unlocked in your skill tree, you can give a skill more points than its maximum level. But doing so is completely pointless. For example, if I have both stamina regen passive skills unlocked in the skill tree, 
And then I equip the Nora Thunder Warrior with the Stamina Regen we've slotted on it. We'll be allocating 6 points to Stamina Regen, which only has a max level of 4. By pressing R2 in our inventory, we can see that the extra 2 points are not boosting this skill any further, which means we're wasting a weave slot. Instead, we should use this slot for another weave that boosts a different skill that isn't already maximized. Or we could use one of the damage resistance weaves to boost our damage resistance stats. While the skill boosting weaves are definitely the ones you should focus on, we also have weaves that increase melee, ranged, and elemental damage resistances. These come from chests, merchants, or looting machines, and you can get unlimited copies of them. Melee and ranged defense weaves max out at 10%, and elemental defense weaves max out at 15%. You can also find hybrid weaves with resistance to two elements that max out at 7%, and all defense weaves that boost every damage resistance stat by 3%. Generally, you'll want to focus on using the two weave slots for skill boosting weaves, as those offer a much greater benefit. But in the early and mid game, you likely won't have many of those weaves to swap around. So early on, it can be a good idea to use some damage resistance weaves. I recommend prioritizing melee defense, since melee is the most likely way you'll take damage. But if you find yourself dying from a particular elemental attack often, then boosting resistance to that element can be a good idea too. In case you were wondering, there's currently no way to boost an outfit's resistance stats to 100 or higher, which would negate all damage of that type. Well, except for the acid resistance on the Tanakh Vanquisher. As of patch 1.18, when fully upgraded, its acid resistance is 75, meaning you can push the total number to 105 when equipped with two 15% acid resistance weaves. This does actually allow you to take zero damage from acid attacks, such as those from an acid bellowback. I suspect this 75 base resistance is a mistake though, because when you equip the two 15% weaves, you can see that the stat number disappears. The highest resistance you can get on other outfits is 95, which is still very good. By the way guys, if you find guides like this one helpful, leaving a like on this video really does help out the channel and would be much appreciated. Okay, so now that we understand how to choose outfits and pair them with weaves, let's take a look at my recommended outfits for each stage of the game. Remember, the most important aspect of an outfit is its built-in skill boosts, so we want to find outfits that boost skills we use often. For the vast majority of players, regardless of your playstyle, there are two mechanics you will, or at least should, make use of all the time. Concentration and Weapon Stamina. So, outfits with skills that boost these two mechanics are highly versatile. The Nora Anointed, which you start the game with, fits this criteria well. It has a boost for Concentration Regen, as well as a plus one weave for Concentration Plus. The Potent Medicine skill is also pretty nice to have early on to help with healing. I recommend most players go straight from the Nora Anointed to my recommended Blue Rarity outfit. But if you like to play through the story slower and do lots of side content, then you may want to consider an upgrade. My updated recommendation for an early game upgrade is the Nora Champion, which is a reward from the Bristleback side quest. The Champion offers even higher melee defense than my original recommendation, the Azeram Explorer. Plus, it offers boosts for Concentration Plus, Stealth Ranged Plus, and Stealth Tear Plus through its plus one weave. The Azeram Explorer is still a good option if you use your spear a lot, with its boost for Critical Strike Plus and Power Attack, as well as its melee damage weave, but I think the Nora Champion is better for most players. But again, it's perfectly fine to use the default Nora Anointed until you're ready to upgrade to my recommended blue rarity outfit, the Nora Sentinel, which you can purchase in Baron Light. The Sentinel is an excellent outfit that can honestly carry you into the late game on most difficulty levels. The boosts for Concentration Plus, Stamina Regen, and Stealth Ranged Plus, and the Plus 2 Concentration Regen Coil are all very useful. Even once you've moved on to a better outfit, this weave is valuable to have. For the second weave slot on the Nora Sentinel, my pick would be the Plus 1 Weapon Stamina Plus weave also sold in Baron Light. This will increase how much stamina you have available to use weapon techniques. You might also consider the Plus 1 Low Health Defense weave available in Baron Light as well. This one will help keep you alive in the early and mid game. As for other blue outfit options, the Utaru Gravesinger is a decent choice if you're an ardent stealth player, but the rest of the blue outfits are so niche that I can't really recommend them unless you're really interested in a specific playstyle like Trapper or Melee. Moving up to purple rarity, we have a whopping 22 options. Now, you could actually stick with the Nora Sentinel and skip a purple outfit altogether, instead going straight to one of the legendaries like the Nora Thunder Warrior. But if that's not going to work out for your playthrough, I recommend going for the Nora Valiant, which can first be purchased in Lowland's Path. It has plenty of those concentration and weapon stamina boosts I'm always looking for, and it has a plus two low health ranged weave, which is a bit more situational but still quite useful. However, I would actually remove it and instead use the plus one low health defense weave available for sale in Baron Light. In the second slot, I'd use the plus one deep concentration weave sold in Scalding Spear. 
As for alternative purple outfits, you stealth fans will want to consider the Utaru Hardweave, although you could pretty easily skip to the ultimate stealth outfit, the Utaru Winterweave for sale in Thornmarsh. Another option is Sobex Raiment, which you get for free during the main quest line. This actually got downgraded from purple rarity to blue for some reason after launch, but its stats are on par with most purple outfits. I would put the plus two concentration regen weave from the Nora Sentinel on here, and consider replacing the default low health regen weave with the plus one concentration plus weave from your original Nora anointed outfit. The low health regen weave is good though, so it's worth upgrading Sobek's raiment to get it regardless. Other solid purple outfit options to consider are the Tanakh Skirmisher available in Scalding Spear, Tanakh Reaver from the Blood Choke side quest, Utaru Gravesinger for sale in Legacy's Landfall, and the Tanakh Vindicator from the Deluge side quest. Of course, we all want to get to those gold legendary outfits, and I have three recommended legendary builds for you. The Nora Thunder Warrior is the absolute best outfit for most players, though you have to complete arena challenges to get it. If you're having trouble with the arena and don't want to lower your difficulty, I'll link my arena guide down below. Now, assuming you have all the related skills unlocked, the Thunder Warrior will boost every concentration and stamina skill to max level once fully upgraded and equipped with its default weapon stamina plus weave. The Valor Surge Master Weave that comes with it is pretty good too, but I find I build up Valor quickly enough without it, so I prefer to swap it out for something else. Lately, I've been using the Potion Proficiency Weave, which comes from the Tanakh Sky Climber outfit. With Potion Proficiency maxed out, I can drink potions without stopping, which really helps keep the flow of combat going. The next most popular legendary outfit is probably the Tanakh Vanquisher, which provides an excellent basis for a low health build. The goal with a low health build is to max out all the low health skills, like low health defense and low health ranged, and then purposely play in the low health state to take advantage of these, namely staying below 50% health to get an 80% boost to range damage. The Vanquisher has built-in boosts that cover most of the low health skills, but you'll want to add the low health regen weave from Sobex Rainment. After that, I recommend using either the Stamina Regen Weave from the Utaru Gravesinger, or the Weapon Stamina Plus Weave from the Thunder Warrior so you can use your weapon techniques more often. But you could also consider other weaves here, like Potion Proficiency or one that boosts concentration. For the last build, you stealth fans will want to check out the Utaru Winter Weave. The coils it comes with are solid, especially Stealth Range Plus, but personally, I prefer to replace Silent Strike Gain with Stealth Tear Plus from the Tanakh Vindicator. This makes the outfit a little better for machine hunting, as opposed to dealing with rebels. The Winter Weave is also good for slaughter spine hunting because of its high plasma defense stat. You can load it up with a plasma defense weave or two, which will help you tank the slaughter spine's plasma attacks. It's also worth noting that the Thunder Warrior can make a good machine hunting stealth build, since it already has stealth ranged plus built in. Add the stealth tear plus weave and then either use the default weapon stamina plus weave or the low profile weave from the Tanakh Tactician to reduce visibility. In addition to the plus two weaves we've already mentioned, there's a handful of other useful ones you may want to go back and grab from other outfits to use in your build. The Concentration Plus Weave is very versatile, and found on the Karja Shadow outfit for sale in Plainsong. Similarly, the Stamina Regen Weave can be found on the Utaru Gravesinger outfit which is sold in Legacy's Landfall. The Evader Weave is pretty handy for increasing the number of times you can dodge without stumbling, and you can find it on the Azeron Forester outfit which is obtained from a supply cache in the area for the Breaking Even side quest. For low health builds, you'll want the low health defense weave found on the Tanakh Marauder for sale in Thornmarsh. The Tanakh Skirmisher sold in Scalding Spear has the Deep Concentration Weave, and the Stealth Tear Plus Weave is found on the Tanakh Vindicator, which is a reward from the Deluge side quest. Also, as my friend Plusle is always reminding me, remember you can use food to address a skill boost that you aren't getting from either a weave or outfit's built-in stats. A nice trick is to wear either a fully upgraded Tanakh Sky Climber, Utaru Right Singer, or Karja Trader outfit when using food to take advantage of their food duration boosts. You can swap back to your preferred outfit after consuming it, but this will increase the food boost's total duration to a whopping 15 minutes. Finally, don't forget that Forbidden West has transmog, meaning you can equip one outfit for its stats, but apply the look of another. For example, I typically have the Thunder Warrior equipped, but I can use the Apply Look option to get the aesthetics of the Karja Blazon, which is a popular outfit found in the supply cache in the Eastern Lie Rebel Camp. And before everyone asks, the orange dyes are only available in New Game Plus, so you'll have to dive into that if you want them. All other dyes are unlocked by completing quests and other activities. Also, if you don't like the look of an outfit's headpiece, you can turn that off by toggling the Show Headpiece setting. Oh, and if you want to check out literally every outfit and die combination to find your favorite look, you can check out the awesome 
gallery created by Robo Dino Puppy linked in the description. Thank you Robo Dino Puppy for all the work that went into this amazing resource. I also have lots of other cool resources for outfits and weaves in my Forbidden West resource database linked below. You'll find links for things like my coil and weave spreadsheet that lists locations for every weapon coil and outfit weave in the game and Plusle's food spreadsheet that shows what all the different foods do. Alright guys, that's my guide for outfits and weaves in Forbidden West. I hope this helped you wrap your head around how to choose your perfect combo. If you enjoyed it or learned something new, leaving a like would be much appreciated. And if you have a favorite outfit and weave combo or a tip we didn't cover, definitely leave me a comment down below. As always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.